to Mexico, where the town of Gallup is newly reopened after a lockdown expired on Sunday. Gallup is a gateway to the Navajo Nation, the largest Native American tribe whose confirmed cases, you see the numbers there, more than 3,000 with 100,000 deaths. A nine-person Doctors Without Borders team is now helping the Navajo. It arrived last month and is expected to stay through June. With me now is the president of the Navajo Nation, Jonathan Nez. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for being with us. Uh, you just heard Sarah Seidner uh, talking about the Sioux oh, yeah. issues with the governor in South Dakota. It, you had a deal, you agreed when the governor of New Mexico shut down Gallup. Where are you now that that lockdown has been lifted? Is there agreement with the with the governor and the other political leadership, or do you have issues? Hey, thanks for having us on the show, uh, John. And, you know, we totally support the South Dakota Ogallala Sioux Nation and the Cheyenne River Sioux Nation. Chairman Her Harold Frazier with his strong um, support for his citizens and to help, you know, take care of his people there. And I appreciate all the 574 tribal leaders throughout the country that are standing on their sovereign ability to help govern themselves and help keep their people safe. And we also appreciate other uh, governmental entities like the city mayors of uh, Gallup and Farmington, border towns around our nation. We are in three states, John. One, uh, I want to say thank you to our governor in Arizona for you know assisting and also the governor of new mexico and the governor of utah that is partnership here because we're all in this together what affects uh the navajo nation affects the states and vice versa and i'm, I'm hoping the south dakota governor sees the same thing here we all got to work together to help our citizens and with the lockdown in gallup new mexico you know navajo nation john has been in lockdown for some time with a shelter in place order since the onset of this virus over a couple uh, months ago. And, you know, and we have a curfew as well from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. during the weekdays. And during the weekends, we have the 57 hour curfew. We just coming off of a 57 hour curfew now, uh, 5 a.m. this morning to protect our citizens because of the slowness in the response from the federal government. We have to use our own sovereign ability to govern ourselves and that's why we have to go as far as saying we're going to cut off traffic we've been cutting off traffic to our navajo nation as well and telling people our tourism destinations are closed please respect the sovereignty of our navajo nation you know we we appreciate you coming back later after this uh public health emergency has gone away but mr president we're, we're i think we're doing I, everything I, that I, in our power to help each other uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. I think I misspoke about the numbers, but you have 31, 22 confirmed cases in the Navajo Nation, 100 deaths uh, in the Navajo Nation on a per capita basis. That is incredibly high. Uh, it rivals when you look at places like New York or New Jersey. I want you to listen here. This is from a CBS documentary. Um, your medical director, a member of your, of your nation, uh, who says, just like we just heard from Sarah Sider in South Dakota, one of the concerns is that if you get a big outbreak, uh, you don't have the medical facilities, the capacity to deal with it. Let's listen. We don't have a lot of funding to lure some very experienced doctors and nurses and medical staff. We just don't. We do carry a high rate of diabetes, you know, hypertension, uh, what we call metabolic syndrome that incorporates those two things. And per capita, we actually have the highest rates. Dr. Tom, they're laying out. You have some of the pre-existing conditions, if you will, uh, on your nation there. Uh, uh, what, are, what are you seeing? Are, are the people who are getting the coronavirus and dying the coronavirus, are they people with obesity, diabetes, heart, underlying conditions? Uh, what are you seeing on the ground? You know, John, we're seeing young people that don't have any type of uh, health problems getting COVID-19. We had uh, a couple of young people who've lost their lives because of coronavirus and they were healthy. And so this virus is hitting everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, male or female or different faiths. It is a virus that's attacking everyone. But here on the Navajo Nation, John, we have been uh, testing very aggressively and we appreciate the work of Dr. Tom and Winslow and many others out there. Vice President Myron Leiser have been on the front lines 
uh, of since this pandemic started, except for the two weeks we had to, uh, you know, be um, quarantined because we were close to an EMT that had COVID-19. But back to the tests, 18,153 tests that have been given and 13,665 have tested negative. So we've been uh, aggressively testing our citizens here on the Navajo Nation, but it's, uh, you know, the, the virus just spreads like wildfire. We have uh, 30 plus percent of our Navajo citizens here on Navajo that don't have running water. We have multiple generations of family members living under one roof as well. And so the need for the federal government to reevaluate the needs of uh, tribal communities throughout the country. And this is all tribes, 574 tribes throughout the United States of America. You know, we've been giving aid to various countries when there's a, an emergency. Don't get me wrong, John. I'm sure the need is, is great for all these other countries when times of emergency. But right here in the middle of the most powerful country, the United States of America, the first citizens of this country are still being pushed aside. And I appreciate you know, being on the show because it magnifies the need to bring full attention to tribal nations throughout this country and the need to bring better infrastructure. And in terms of the health care, it's not just on tribal lands. I think this pandemic, John, has shed light on the, uh, the, the inadequacy of our public health system throughout this country, but more so here on the tribal communities. Mr. President, great, greatly appreciate your time. Need to shift now. The governor of New York is giving his daily briefing, but I thank you for your time and we will revisit this as we go forward. Let's take